Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the work that I do, please subscribe to my channel. Today we're in the laboratory. We're actually in the laminar airflow hood. And what I want to do today is share with you um, aseptic technique, the technique of working in a laminar airflow hood in a sterile environment so that uh, we don't contaminate cultures. Uh, this is a, a method that I've been using all of my career. I've shown a lot of people how to do this. And what I want to do, uh, people in my laboratory, and what I want to do is kind of share that uh, with you. So I want to talk about a little bit about how what the hood is and how it operates, how to flame instruments, how to work in an aseptic environment so that you don't contain contaminate your cultures. Um, so first of all, this is a laminar airflow hood. You should be able to hear a lot of fans blowing in the background, and the fan is blowing sterile air out through a HEPA filter out at me. It blows it out in sheets. Layers of sterile air are being blown out at me, and the type of aseptic environment in which you work dictates a large part of your technique. Uh, one of the other laboratories that I work in, the air the sterile air flows down from the top and then out. Uh, there's also a barrier in the front. And here, there's no barrier. This is a little bit of a, a better hood for laminar airflow hood for working with, um, with aseptic culture. So the air blows out at you. Uh, what you can see that's a little bit off the screen is a flame. And the flame is what I'm gonna be using to sterilize the instruments. And I've got some uh, some forceps right here that I'll be sterilizing and I'll show you how to do that uh, safely um, but when you work in this type of environment the air is blowing my hoods I should also should say these hoods are left on 24-7 uh, so they're never turned on off uh, and back on again so this environment here is very clean also the room in which I'm working in I have five hoods uh, so the, and the, all the hoods are left on, so it's a very clean environment. So this is really a good place, a good uh, environment for working with these cultures to avoid contamination issues. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do when I work in a hood is I spray off with alcohol, and this is a got to be careful. This is a 70% alcohol solution, um, and this. This is not supposed to flame up, but still, I got a flame right here, so I got to be careful. Number one, that somebody didn't slip 95 or 100 percent alcohol in here, and number two, that I don't get too close to the flame. But I just do this and kind of clean up a little bit. You're never going to completely sterilize uh, your hands and your arms, so I just kind of do this as a general cleanup tool. All right. Um, so that's how we get started. The other thing that I want to uh, talk with you a little bit about is because of the airflow in this cabinet, in this hood, how you have to work with cultures and petri dishes and things like this. And, and what I need to do is bring this over from this hood so you can kind of see how we work uh, in this environment. So if this is the hood surface and this is a sterile petri dish, the inside of the petri dish is sterile it's um, and the air is blowing out at you let me bring this up so you uh, you can't see but it's always a good indicator the flame because of the air is blown out at, at me so it's a good indicator that the hood is working in a good operation anyway the air is blowing out at me and so when you work with a petri dish uh, either a petri dish that is empty like this or a petri dish that contains cultures um, and these are orchid that I'll show you how to transfer. Um, when you work with that, you, you, you can work safely in this environment if you follow the, a few techniques, a few rules. And one of the things is don't put anything in between the sterile sample and the flow of the air because you still have a little bit of things falling off of your hands and you still can have things fall off and if you're behind it, they'll end up in the petri dish. If you're above it, the idea behind this is the sterile air, if something drops off, something small drops off of your hands, it'll be blown out and it won't be able to fall into your container. So when you work in with a Petri dish, you take the lid off, you can put it downstream of the wind, you can put it to the left, you can put it to the right. 
but what you don't do is reach around and put it in back because once you put it in back stuff gets blown off and into the the dish here so this is this is uh, this is really the basic rule and the only rule is try not to put anything between the flow of the sterile air and the tissue that you're working with to prevent things from getting blown onto that. Um, that's that's basically it as far as understanding the, the technique and how you're supposed to work. Again, you can put it down when the left or the right, don't reach around something. Similarly, try not to put things, if, if your hood is packed, try not to put things behind your sample because then you'll create eddies, little wind currents that will potentially uh, stir up anything in here and again it'll end up inside of your dish so you got to be careful don't do this um, stuff comes off your fingers ends up in the dish um, again you I've seen people you can turn your your lid upside down if you're very careful if you turn your list dish lid upside down and do it over here when you pick it up you pick it up like this you pick it up from carefully if you reach over to the lid to pick it up before you put it on, guess what? You're reaching over your open dish. Even though it's the lid, it's still an open dish. So pick up your lid. If you if you turn the lid um, upside down, pick your lid up like this, turn it over, and then you're safe. Um, there's a few other things. So when I'm working with this, you know, you have to be careful not to try not to touch the edge of the of the dish if possible or the edge of this and sometimes it's hard to do certain things if you touch something that you're not supposed to touch don't and i've had students do this don't look around to see if anyone's watching and then continue if you don't think anyone caught you contaminating your plate um just stop and reflame if it's an instrument get a new dish if it's a dish um you know <laughs> you're gonna get caught you'll get contamination <coughs> in your plate if you're not careful all right so that's it that's the basic techniques um, and what I want to do is show you how to flame instruments and then I'm going to transfer some samples uh, and let you see how that is done so let me move this out of the way this by the way sorry shot you can't use it okay so flaming instruments I use 95% alcohol that is on the opposite side of the hood from the flame that you can't see that's right here. Um, when you take the instruments, you gotta grab the instrument by the, and the alcohol, I should show you this. I gotta get, don't get too close to the flame. So the alcohol is in the test tube and it's, and it's um, the instrument's about 75% submerged into the alcohol. 95% alcohol will flame at very, at very good levels. Um, you then grab the instrument by the tip and you touch it to the flame. And what you'll have is the instrument will catch, catch on fire. I like to make sure to burn all of the alcohol off. What I'm doing is holding the, uh, the forceps parallel to the ground. And the reason I do that is because when you're flaming this, if you have, I'm gonna do it again, if you have flaming, alcohol like this you can see the hopefully you can see the flame if you hold it like this flames out I'm safe if you hold it like this the alcohol drips down here flaming alcohol on your fingers not good if you hold it like this the flames rise up also not good if you hold it like this and it's good so it'll go out even if you get the alcohol a little bit close to your hands you can just if you're whole if you're parallel to the ground you just drop it you just drop your instrument and you're safe if you do it this is a sharp instrument you don't want to drop the instrument like this it'll go into your either your leg or into the hood surface itself which is not good okay so that's basically it as far as instruments go just make sure before you dip the instrument back in the alcohol that the flame is out you don't want to catch your alcohol uh, on on fire that is also not good all right so now we have sterile instruments sometimes these are hot and we can let them cool down sometimes you can you can use them right away but these are really fine these are really nice fine instruments and i can get a really nice grip of my uh, of my tissue with this sometimes again i use i use two hands to in order to get good control on the forceps um, and what i want to do is that's pretty much the basics so what i want to do is show you how i transfer some 
Uh, these are germinated, germinated um, um, seeds, of, and this happens to be uh, Oprah Winfrey uh, crossed with uh, oh Machima Victory. All right, so these are seedlings that are growing up, and I actually like to use my microscope in order to see the samples. This is just a really good quality um, dissecting microscope, and I use this because um, you, you can see much better. So this is in the hood. This is an isolation table style hood, so the table doesn't quite sit on the ground. It's not connected to the hood. I don't have vibration. This is a nice setup here, and I'm working directly on the hood surface. Um, I'm gonna get my uh, alcohol away from behind the Petri dish so that now there's a, a nice uh, open flow of sterile air from the hood to my dish and now I can work in here uh, pretty pretty nicely. So I'm gonna tra I'm gonna transfer I'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna transfer maybe um, um, 16 at 16 germinating seeds from this dish onto this dish that I'll put right put right here. Actually, let me move. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm see what I'm doing here. Okay, I have done my one my one dish. I've got quite a few more dishes. I want to get at least four dishes out of this one plate. Um, I don't know if you told if you could tell because I, I sped up the motion on that. But when I was transferring, I hit the forceps on this part of the microscope, and I had to stop and reflame my instrument. I just would you, you just you can't you can't really trust that even though this is in the hood it should be clean it should be okay once you touch your instrument to some your sterile instrument to something you have to reflame it so that's what I did about I guess about halfway through but what I did is generated this dish right here and I made a four by four grid of these um, germinating seedlings and I'm actually testing four different media for um, how the medium components are gonna affect the seedling uh, development. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to share with you is that I do use a microscope in order to see what I'm doing. You can really see the embryos and the, develop, the germinating uh, seeds really, really nicely with this good quality microscope. And what you look for is uh, just single embryo, single seedlings with with a root associated with it you want to be careful be, stay away from some of some cases there'll be uh, some some just tissue proliferation or callusing that's involved you want to stay away from that I do have another cross that I have there that then and, and this is a mobile momolani rainbow uh, crossed with uh, Cattleya ludomaniania and what, um, what's interesting here, and I'll use the scope to transfer the seedlings from one dish to another dish. These are on, I should mention, these are on a seed germination medium. And this, this next medium is a replate. That's actually four different versions of replate medium. But on this Momolani rainbow cross, what I see in here is a combination of really red um, seedlings and green seedlings and I'll, I'll take a picture under the microscope and share with you what that looks like but it allows you to separate you know the red seedlings from the green seedlings and you can you, underneath the microscope you can see the quality of these seedlings really really well and if you take the more vigorous seedlings you'll get more vigorous plants so that's the other reason that I do selection 
underneath the uh, under the underneath the microscope is that you can really really see carefully uh, what you can see really in good detail what you're transferring and it lets you transfer the most vigorous vigorous seedlings that are likely to give rise to the most vigorous plants. Okay, so that's all I have for today. I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I've got a lot of dishes, a lot of seedlings yet to transfer. I hope this uh, aseptic technique video was useful to you. If you're interested in learning more about the work that I do, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be propagating a lot of orchids today and my wishes to you, happy propagating.